Hey friends, ho ho ho, we're having a giveaway at Kids Stories and More. Look at the description below to find out how you can enter and win a special package from Mimi to your school. You're not going to want to miss out on this. So check the description below and follow the rules so you can enter. She's trying to get to 2,000 subscribers. I know you can help her do that. It'll be a Christmas miracle. By the way, I'm doing a super duper shout out to Scott Lake Elementary School. Woohoo! Ho ho ho, Scott Lake! Dr. McKinney, Mrs. Balderamos, and especially Mrs. McBurney and Ms. Major's class. We love that you come and support Kids Stories and More. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get into our story. Well, I'm in my favorite room in the house, as you can tell, and I have a classic book that if you don't already have this on your shelf, you definitely need to get a copy of this for your library. This book is called Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. It is written by Chris Hall and illustrated by James Bernardin. And this is actually based on a true story of a little girl who wrote into a newspaper about Santa and the holiday. I know you're gonna love it. Let's get into the story. Christmas time is full of joy and happiness, usually. But one year long ago, Christmas wasn't very happy at all. Times are hard in New York City, and the weather was especially cold. People hurried through the streets, bundled up against the chill. No one stopped to smile or say hello. Christmas was just a few weeks away, but nobody even seemed to notice. Nobody, that is, except for a little girl named Virginia. Virginia loved Christmas. She loved the glittering lights. She loved the joyful carols. But most of all, she loved Santa Claus. She could hardly wait for Christmas Eve when she would set out a plate of cookies and listen for sleigh bells. This year, she even made her very own Santa Claus book. Wow, Virginia's best friend Ollie exclaimed as he looked at the book. We should show Tom and Taylor and George. Come on, let's go. Virginia was a bit nervous about showing it to everybody, but Ollie was already running down the stairs, so Virginia grabbed the book and followed him out the door. At the park, the other children gathered around to see Virginia's book. Everyone was so excited they shouted all at once. Last year, Santa brought me a train set, said Tom. He brought me a dollhouse, exclaimed Taylor. I got a baseball mitt, shouted George. Did Santa bring you a baby bottle too, said a voice. Charlotte, the meanest, bossiest, snootiest girl in town, pushed her way forward. You still believe in Santa? Charlotte scoffed. Ha! That's hysterical. No one could travel the whole world in one night. That's not true, said Virginia. Santa is as real as you are. It's baby stuff teased Charlotte as she grabbed Virginia's Santa Claus book. With a laugh, she held it high above her head. Give it back, said Virginia. Stop it, shouted Ollie, rushing to help. But Ollie tripped and bumped into Virginia, who crashed onto Charlotte, who lost her grip on Virginia's book, which landed in the mud with a splat. Charlotte laughed aloud. Face it, Virginia, she sneered. There's no Santa Claus. Virginia cradled the wet, muddy book in her hands. She knew in her heart that Charlotte was wrong. There is a Santa Claus, she thought to herself, and I'm going to prove it. That afternoon, Virginia visited a place she knew was full of answers, the New York Public Library. Let's see, Santa Claus, said the friendly librarian as she pulled book after book from the shelves. Ah, in England, his name is Father Christmas. In Holland, he's called Sinterklaas, read Virginia. In Italy, he's Babbo Natale, Ollie cried. A 
According to this, said the librarian, flipping through a heavy book, he lives in Finland. No, wait, Greenland. And he has a giant goat. Ollie shouted. Virginia looked at the piles of books on the table. She was frustrated. This is all interesting, she said, but none of it tells me if Santa is real. Do you think Santa's real? That evening, Virginia passed through Herald Square in the heart of the city. A man with a beard and red hat stood on the street corner. Virginia's heart leapt, but the man was skinny and scraggly and his beard was tied on with string. You're not Santa Claus, Virginia said. That's true, I'm not, replied the man. Then why are you dressed like him, Virginia asked. I suppose you could say I work for him, said the scraggly Santa. I try to do whatever Santa would do if he were here. The man jingled a rusty old bell. He was collecting money for the poor. Shouldn't you be wearing a coat, asked Virginia. Well, I had one, replied the man, but someone needed it more than I did. Well, that was amazing that he would share his coat with someone that needed it more than him when it's freezing outside. That night, Virginia asked her father, is there really a Santa Claus? Hmm, he began. Well, someone brought you presents last year, and someone ate the milk and cookies you left out, so logically. But Virginia wasn't listening to her father's long-winded explanation. She was looking at something on her father's desk, a copy of the New York Sun. That's it, Virginia cried. I could write to the newspaper. Well, yes, I suppose you could, said her father. After all, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Virginia went straight to her desk. She took out a pencil and paper, and she began to write a letter. Dear editor, she wrote, some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? Virginia smiled. She knew that when the sun received her letter, the editor would surely give her the answer she needed. So she wrote to the newspaper to see what they would say. A few days later, Virginia's letter arrived at the newspaper office. Santa Claus, growled Francis Church, editor of The Sun. This is preposterous. We report facts, not fantasies. I don't know, sir, said Lewis, Mr. Church's assistant. Maybe you should answer it. Lewis, people rely on this paper for the truth, said Mr. Church. We need to maintain our credibility. But she's only a child, Lewis pleaded. Everyone grows up sometime, Mr. Church said coldly. He tossed Virginia's letter down the garbage chute, which shut with a loud clang. Meanwhile, Virginia sat in her room and moped. She'd been waiting and waiting, but hadn't heard back from the newspaper. I just need some proof, Virginia sighed. Virginia, her mother said, believing in Santa isn't something you prove. It's something you do. Whenever we act like Santa Claus would, we are kind to others. That proves he's real. Virginia thought about that. And then she remembered someone else who acted like Santa Claus. Suddenly, she had an idea. The next day, Virginia brought Scraggly Santa a Christmas present. A new coat, he exclaimed. Just what I needed. Thank you, uh, um, Virginia, said Virginia. Well, Virginia, he replied, today you're Santa Claus. And even though Scraggly Santa was the one wearing the coat, Virginia felt warm inside. It is always better to give than to receive, isn't it? Isn't that adorable, said a familiar voice. Virginia turned to see Charlotte standing nearby. On her face was a nasty smile, and in her hand was a crumpled letter. I found this outside the newspaper office, Charlotte said, in a garbage can. Virginia felt a hole in the pit of her stomach. The newspaper had thrown her letter away. She couldn't believe it. With tears in her eyes, she ran away as fast as she could. That night, scraggly Santa burst into Mr. Church's office. This letter was written by a friend of mine, said scraggly Santa. I think you'd better answer it. I'm sorry, but I only print the facts, replied Mr. Church gruffly. When people believe they make the world a better place, he said, answer that letter and you'll give this girl and maybe this whole city something to believe in. That night, Mr. Church didn't go home. 
Long after everyone else was asleep, he sat in his office thinking about what scraggly Santa had said. If you see it in the sun, he mumbled to himself, it's so. Virginia wasn't sleeping either. She felt like everything she loved, presents, Christmas, Santa Claus, just didn't matter anymore. Baby stuff, she sniffed sadly. The next morning at breakfast, Virginia stared at her porridge. She didn't feel like eating. She didn't feel like doing anything. Virginia's parents were worried. They had never seen their daughter so upset. Then there was a knock at the door. Look, shouted Ollie as he held up a newspaper. Virginia gasped as she read the headline. She couldn't believe her eyes. In the paper was an editorial, a message written just for her. It says, is there a Santa Claus? Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They do not believe except for what they see. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exist. How dreary would be the world if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as dreary as if there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no poetry, no romance. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world would be extinguished. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives, and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. Virginia had never been so happy. There was a magical feeling inside her, bursting to get out. Merry Christmas, she shout shouted to the street below. Merry Christmas, replied an old man who was passing by. He had rosy cheeks, a snowy white beard, and a twinkle in his eye. <gasps> Who's that? The old man reached into his coat and handed something to Virginia. It was her Santa Claus book. Good as new. With a tip of his hat, the old man continued on his way. Virginia smiled as she watched him go. And as she stood on the step, book in hand, Virginia thought the whole world seemed to gl glow a bit brighter. If you'd like to read the actual question that Virginia asked the editor at the newspaper and his actual reply, you'll have to get this book. And that's the end of the story. What I liked here was that know if you can see this let me zoom in a bit I don't know if they're still doing this but it says to honor Virginia's legacy Macy's will donate 10% of the proceeds from the sale of this book to the Make-A-Wish Foundation together we will give many more children a reason to believe now the Make-A-Wish Foundation is special to my heart they make wishes come true for kids that have um, terminal illnesses, meaning they're very, very sick and they grant wishes and it could be any wish. And I think that is a wonderful charity that I've donated to before. Well, what did you think of that story? Yes, Virginia. I love it because it shows how as we grow older, we question things and even though you can't see Santa and even though you can't prove with facts like the newspaper wanted to, you know in your heart, you know by the actions of others, you know by how you feel. Faith is always a feeling inside and your belief beyond what you can see. So for those of you like me who believe, I wish you a very happy and healthy holiday. And always remember the magic of the holidays, no matter what holiday you celebrate, is about love and family and getting together and being kind to one another. And I hope today 
you will take an opportunity and be kind, show kindness to someone that you haven't shown kindness to before. Do something special for someone you normally haven't gotten to spend much time with. Go out of your way to make someone's day and it doesn't have to cost a thing. It could be a smile. It could be holding the door open. It could be sharing something of yours. Those little gestures mean the world to those around you. And from Mimi's house to yours, again, happy holidays. And I'll see you in the new year. Bye-bye.